Hello, and welcome to our chapter on Implementation Fidelity and Adaptations in Low- and Middle-Income Countries LMICs. The aim of this chapter is to explain implementation fidelity and its conceptual underpinnings. Discuss measurement and monitoring of implementation fidelity. Explain adaptation and its concepts. And establish connections between implementation fidelity and the adaptation of evidence-informed interventions. Let's start by setting the background for this subject. The outcomes of implementation research are the result of purposeful efforts to improve the integration of evidence-informed interventions into real-world practice settings. These outcomes serve as measures of successful implementation and act as proximal indicators of the implementation process. Fidelity is among these outcomes of implementation research. Implementation fidelity refers to how closely a program is delivered according to its intended plan. Adherence is commonly utilized as a surrogate for implementation fidelity and is said to be essentially the bottom line measurement of implementation fidelity. The concept of fidelity has been interpreted differently depending on the type of study, such as whether it falls under program evaluation, efficacy, or effectiveness research, as well as the specific field of study, be it mental health, public health, or science education. Although implementation fidelity and intervention fidelity are often used interchangeably in literature, they are distinct terms. Let's look at each in a little more detail. Intervention fidelity is the extent to which an intervention was delivered as planned in controlled settings. It applies to controlled studies where the research study groups, both the experimental and control groups, receive the intervention, or instructions, exactly as described in the study protocol. Implementation fidelity is related to the degree to which programs were implemented, and or scaled up, as planned, beyond controlled settings, while intervention fidelity refers to the degree to which a specific intervention is implemented as intended in controlled settings. In implementation research, the interest is in implementation fidelity, while in effectiveness research, the focus is on intervention fidelity. To understand the theoretical underpinnings of implementation fidelity, the conceptual framework shows that the degree of implementation fidelity could influence the connection between interventions and their desired outcomes. In discussing the framework, fidelity has four elements. Content, this is the active ingredients for example the drug, skills, or knowledge the intervention seeks to deliver to its recipients. Coverage describes whether all the people who should be participating in, or receiving the intervention, got it as intended. Frequency refers to the number of sessions implemented. While duration refers to the length of sessions implemented. There are also four moderating factors for implementation fidelity. These are Intervention complexity, this is the extent to which the intervention is simple or complex, detailed, or vague. Simple but specific interventions are more likely to be implemented with high fidelity than overly complex interventions. Facilitation strategies. These strategies are used to support, optimize, and standardize implementation fidelity, for example training, guidelines, and protocols for implementers. Quality of delivery. This is the way the implementer delivers the program using the techniques, processes, or methods planned. Quality improvement strategies may improve the quality of delivery of the intervention. And finally, participant responsiveness describes the degree to which participants are engaged and involved in the activities and content of the program. Let's move on to how you can measure or monitor implementation fidelity. Measuring fidelity is important for reliability and validity of implementation research findings. There are five steps to developing a comprehensive fidelity measurement. The first of these steps is to clearly define the scope and purpose of the fidelity assessment. Is it at an individual or organizational level? Take a moment to describe the aim and scope of fidelity assessment. Secondly, 
it is important to identify the essential components of fidelity. List the core and adaptive components separately. Remember that adaptive components are program features that can be modified to fit the local context without impacting the program's effectiveness. Core components, or active ingredients, are empirically linked to positive outcomes and program effectiveness. Depending on the evidence-informed intervention, the measurement of fidelity may focus on one component of adherence instead of all of them. Third, develop a fidelity measurement or assessment tool. This tool needs to be rigorously pilot-tested. Several measurement-related criteria should be considered, for example, the organization of the fidelity measurement tool. Make sure you have a customized, detailed list of the content items and process items. The items to be included in the list. Before creating your tool, think about using already existing, proven tools for similar interventions. For example, if you're focusing on skills acquisition, you could tweak the fidelity of implementation rating system. You can also make a fidelity checklist based on treatment manuals or guidelines. Remember, the more detailed your tool is, the better it can accurately measure fidelity. Phrasing of the items. When wording the items, make sure each one measures a single aspect of fidelity. Avoid using vague or double-barreled items, as they may not provide a clear variable for analysis. Response choices. These depend on whether you are focusing on content or process measures. They can be binary, yes-no, Likert scale, or phase completion scales. Pilot testing the measurement tool. The instrument should undergo an iterative process of testing until there is 90% agreement. To monitor fidelity effectively during the study, you must first determine how you are going to rate and monitor it. This could be through observation, self-reporting, or video audio recording. The rating process should be random for it to be reliable. And the raters should be trained. The scoring for the same aspect should be above 90% agreement. Lastly, you can use fidelity ratings in outcomes analysis or evaluation. The fidelity variable can be used as a moderator of the relationship between intervention and the related outcomes. Adaption of evidence-informed interventions is defined as a change to the content or delivery of an evidence-informed intervention to meet the needs of a given context. There are two forms adaptation might take. The first being the modification of program content, with changes incorporated into protocols or manuals to suit consumer needs. The second is the modification of program delivery, which speaks to changes related to the characteristics of the delivery person, for example nurses or lay workers, channels of delivery, for example online versus in facility delivery, or the location of delivery, for example community or church-based rather than school-based delivery. Because fidelity is so important for program effectiveness, adaptations are often considered a threat to fidelity, even though they may promote effectiveness by enhancing the fit between the evidence-informed intervention and a new context. Adaptations are an important aspect of implementation, because it is rare that an evidence-informed intervention will be the perfect fit for a given context without some modification. To ease this tension between fidelity and adaptation, there are several frameworks in literature to guide the adaptation process of evidence-informed interventions to fit new or different contexts while minimizing changes that could compromise fidelity or negatively affect the program effectiveness. These frameworks provide a systematic process for program adaptation to increase fit, acceptability and effectiveness of evidence-informed interventions. Examples of adaptation frameworks include Frame Step Framework Adapt Framework Adaptation based on EPIS Framework There are 11 steps in the adaptation process. These steps were compiled according to the EPIS framework and fall under the following phases, exploration, preparation, implementation, and sustainment. 
under the exploration phase we have 1. Initial assessment 2. Intervention selection 3. Intervention exploration Under the preparation phase we have 4. Identification of potential mismatches 5. Intervention model development 6. Establishment of networks, capacity and infrastructure Under the implementation phase we have 7. Undertaking modifications 8. Pilot testing 9. Intervention revision and implementation And finally under the sustainment phase we have 10. Evaluation and 11. Maintenance and evolution At the exploration phase, the following steps are important. Initial assessment, identify the new target population. Include contextual determinants through needs assessments and organizational capacity to implement the evidence-informed intervention. Select intervention, select the program that best matches the new population and context. Exploration of intervention, identify and review relevant evidence-based practices and understand the programs and their core and adaptive elements. We then move into the preparation phase. Identification of potential mismatches, assess any adaptation concerns including mismatches, barriers to implementation and participation. Intervention model development, develop a logic model and plan for implementation. Establishment of networks and stakeholders, consult with advisory boards and community planning groups within the context, and identify stakeholders who can champion program adoption and ensure program fidelity. In the implementation phase, undertake modifications, develop the adaptation plan by adapting the original program contents through collaborative efforts, making sure cultural adaptations are completed through pilot testing without changing the core components. Ensure retention of fidelity to core elements and systematically reduce mismatches between the program and the new context. Pilot test the adapted intervention, pre-test adapted materials with stakeholder groups, including pilot testing the adapted evidence-informed intervention in the new setting. Intervention revision and implementation, refine and implement the adaptations incorporating stakeholders' feedback. And finally in the sustainment phase. Evaluate, develop and implement an evaluation plan. Maintenance and evolution, establish and implement a dissemination of the adapted intervention. Let's take a quick look at an example of how implementation fidelity is constructed and measured through the Seasonal Malaria Chemoprophylaxis, SMC, intervention in Burkina Faso. This implementation fidelity variable was constructed by assessing the number of activities that were implemented as intended, implemented or modified, added and not implemented, divided by the total number of activities for each component of the strategy. The essential ingredients of the intervention were drug administration including dosage, training and supply. The adaptable elements were behavioral change communication strategies to address the gaps in advocacy door-to-door -door activities and M&E plan. The reason for making changes was to fit the local context. This included adjusting things like whether training is done door-to-door -door or within the community or organization, how often it's done, and whether parents give medicine instead of healthcare workers. Let's take a moment to summarize what we have learnt about implementation fidelity and adaptation. Fidelity is one of the implementation research outcomes. Implementation fidelity is important in implementation research in real-life settings, while intervention fidelity is about adherence to the evidence-informed intervention protocol in effectiveness studies in controlled settings. The conceptual underpinning of fidelity highlights the moderating role of fidelity and its own moderators in the relationship between intervention and outcomes. Measurement of fidelity should be done in a systematic manner to enhance validity of results. Adaptations with a high degree of fidelity are important for program effectiveness.
After defining what we mean by adaptation, we then explained the need to balance fidelity and adaptation. We studied several examples of adaptation frameworks that inform systematic processes for program adaptation, and using the EPIS framework, we described the 11 steps of the adaptation process. Finally, we used a malaria case study to illustrate key elements in implementation fidelity as well as the possible adaptation of the intervention. That's it for this first chapter but before you go, take a moment to consolidate what you have learnt by putting it into practice. Download this chapter's supporting resource material and complete the activity there. Once you have completed the activity, please join us for Chapter 5, where we will look at measurement of implementation research outcomes.